If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, September 18th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Volunteers make up a very large part of the reason why U.S. Master Swimming is such a success, and the organization recognizes some of the top volunteers around the country each year at the United States Aquatic Sports Convention. This year, 14 people were honored with the Dorothy Donnelly Service Award, and one of those awards recipients joins us today in the Finise Monitor. Tim Watt has been a part of Oregon Master Swimming for many years and is currently serving in a unique capacity. And Tim joins us now via Skype from Oregon City, Oregon. Tim, how are you? It's good to see you. I'm good, thanks, Jeff. Well, congratulations on the award. Uh, did they tell you beforehand that you were going to win this to make sure that you were going to be there to accept it? No, I had no idea. It was a complete surprise when they, uh, when they announced my name. So tell me what it was like to sit there and, and realize, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm being recognized by U.S. Master Swimming. Um, pretty amazing experience. I know uh, a few recipients of the award and I know uh, what they do for the organization and to be uh, recognized on that level um, for appreciation for my service was, uh, was an amazing experience. Most, most volunteers will say, you know, the work is what's important. They're not doing it for the recognition. But I would imagine having that hardware is something that, that's pretty special, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, now, let me just kind of get an idea of some of the things you've been doing within Oregon Master Swimming. You're, you were a vice chair for many years. And uh, right now, you're serving in something that's called the souvenir chair. I've never heard of that before. Tell us about that. So I'm the souvenir chair, so um, my responsibility is, is marketing the Oregon Master Swimming logo and having gear like t-shirts and swim caps, um, swim towels, license plate frames, bag tags, pins, um, anything, any sort of trinket that people want to have to, to show that they're a member of Oregon Master Swimming and give an identity to uh, what's supposed to live. So how did you get, um, I, want, I don't want to say get roped into this, but um, what attracted you to want to, to get involved as souvenir chair? Well, I'm, I'm really not a spectator to the sport of swimming, so if I go to a meeting and I hear that there's something that needs to be done and, and nobody raises their hand, I'll be the first one to raise my hand and, and take on uh, whatever needs to be done. Um, so when you're when you were talking about marketing um, Oregon Master Swimming, is is do you have a marketing background? Is that something that you're comfortable doing? You that you know how to do well? No, I have no marketing background. Maybe a little bit in college we studied marketing and things like that. But um, for me, um, I've always collected swimming trinkets. I have swimming pins. I've collected over 800 swimming pins throughout the years. There's multiple t-shirts, um, caps, and just anything that has to do with swimming, I, I like to collect those things. Um, being a pretty visible person within Oregon Masters Swimming and um, interacting with the, with the membership, they've been inquiring about these different items, and, and I found uh, kind of the avenue to be able to do that with the souvenir chair position. The souvenir chair position, there wasn't really too much involvement. There wasn't any merchandise being brought to, to the meets, the local meets, and so I, I guess I resurrected that. And uh, in the end, the OMS uh, board itself gave me a thousand dollar budget for each year to to brand the OMS logo and provide it to our membership. Well, so, any any amount of money to help you do your do your job is very helpful, I'm sure. Uh, what is um, how is Oregon Master Swimming as a brand around the state? As a brand, um, well, we're, we're about 1,200 members strong. Um, you know, we're a small swimming community. Um, what I find is if I'm wearing something that says Master Swimming out in the general public and, and people will, will approach me and inquire and they will, you know, can you tell me more about Master Swimming? So for me, it's, it's an identity and it's, it's a great conversation piece. The people are very interested in what Master Swimming is. 
You know, I think this is kind of a conversation that a lot of the elite pro athletes were having. And, you know, they were trying to find ways in the, the bodysuit era to, to get sponsors to put their put their brands all over the bodysuits. I think maybe we should have, uh, you know, shirts or something where people can go out and just have master swimming logos and just hand them out to the general public. I think that probably is another good thing. I'm, I hope I'm giving you ideas to help, you know, further the, not just the U.S. Master Swimming brand, but the Oregon Master Swim, Swimming brand. And, and the United States Master Swimming offers, you know, swim caps, they offer the luggage tags, they offer the window cling on stickers. And I use those things when I'm, when I'm recruiting or when I get new members on my, on my workout group, I provide them with those, those little, you know, swimming trinkets. And, and they really appreciate that. You know, I'm, wow, I'm really a member of something now. And it's a pretty mm-hmm. special thing. So to have that available to our membership, not only the, USMS branding, but along with Oregon Master Swimming, it really creates quite an identity. Is there any way to quantify the success that you're having as Souvenir Chair in terms of getting the brand out there? Success? I can't keep my t-shirts. I have to keep reordering t-shirts. And um, I, with this new um, budget that I have, I, I'm slowly, over time, establishing quite a quite an inventory. So I have a few things the last for a number of years, which is, which is the idea behind you know, establishing this position. So. Yeah, t-shirts are always popular. So if, if, you, if you have to constantly order t-shirts, I think that is a good way to market your success. Uh, I want to read a little cl- uh, snippet from the nomination form that was submitted for you to um, be in consideration for the Dorothy Donnelly Award. It read, Tim has been an unsung hero of OMS, Oregon Master Swimming, and has been awarded one of Oregon's highest service awards in 2013, the Old Barn Award. He's an enthusiastic guy who works on and on like the Energizer Bunny. You know, you can, the Energizer Bunny basically, you know, and from what I can hear you saying, is that you just never know how to say no. Every, some opportunity always pops up and you always want to say yes. You know, it is okay to say no every once in a while, you know, take some time for yourself and step back. Do you do, tell me why? What what gets you excited about um, being a volunteer for Oregon Masters? The most exciting part about any volunteer position is basically the interaction with people. I love Master Swimming; it's such a social social group of people. I've met the most amazing people throughout the years, and I think when you when you're a volunteer, that you're only really as good as those people that are behind you that support you and. You know, with the service award, the Dot Donnelly service award, I, when I look at the tent that I got, I see a hundred faces of all the people that helped me uh, become a better person and helped the United States Master Swimming or Oregon Master Swimming become a better organization. Um, I realize I can say no, but when I have the opportunity to make something grow and make something maybe a little bit better, um, you know, it's it's. That's an, an award itself is just that, you know, people saying thank you and people smiling and that's all I need. Well, if I ever needed convincing that you were deserving of the, the Donnelly Service Award, you just proved it to me, Tim. <laughs> um, you were at convention in Anaheim last week. Uh, tell me about your experiences. What did you take away from um, your time there? So I'm, I'm fairly involved in the United States Master Swimming. I'm the Northwest Zone Chair. So automatically, um, I'm on the LMSC Development Committee. And within the LMSC Development Committee, where we assist the different LMSCs with the policies and bylaws and really try to help shape them to become a better organization um, within USMS, um, answering any questions they have for the membership, how they can make their volunteers more productive. My favorite favorite part about being on the LMSC Development Committee is I'm the Education Subcommittee Chair. And in my position, I have a, a few other people that work with me, and what we do is we research, and then we provide uh, workshops for membership. So my my greatest responsibility and the funnest one I had was we had five workshops. Um, we had four on Friday at the convention, and we had a big interactive workshop on Saturday. So we, we look at what the members want via the surveys from last year's convention. And you know, we did a partnering with USA Swimming, you know, the dual sanctioning process. Um, I hosted uh, a dual sanction meet for the first time in Oregon this past March. It was a huge success with master swimmers and, and age group swimmers swimming together. Um, we also did, you know, working with aquatic facilities on how, how to get in with your aquatic facility, how to 
help them engage master swimming and other programming. Um, we did one on club development with uh, a program from USMS on how, how to make your workout groups more successful, how you can interact with each other through social media um, and those things. And, and it's looking right now the next one. Uh, oh, Kyle Deary with uh, USMS on marketing products from USMS and, and how you can use the website and the forms and, and things of that nature that are provided by USMS to you know, um, just kind of brand your team and have, have things that are available. On Saturday, we had a, a big workshop, and it was um, we had a, a well-known author and public speaker who came in and did a lot of research on the United States Master Swimming and organization. Came in and showed us how we could become a better volunteer organization. Being the world swimmers, how can you engage people? How can you keep them engaged? And, and how can you look at your organization and make it a better, you know, a better organization? So was, to me, it was a great success. So those, those are the fun things about the United States Aquatic Sports Convention. And then it's kind of the meeting after the meeting. It's, it's getting together with people and just sharing knowledge and resources and getting new ideas. And, and for me, it's, it's an opportunity for me to really look at what my goals are and maybe reassess them and then you know, really have a vision into what we can do throughout the year uh, for the United States match or something. Another part of the education subcommittee was doing the peer-to-peer -peer conference call. So the, we had a treasurer from one LMC that was having difficulties. We could pair them up with a couple of other treasurers and they could do a, a teleconference call and maybe network and, and find solutions. Another thing that we brought to USMS is our webinars. Um, we had a couple of webinars this year. One was on conflict of interest, and we have another one that's slated to come up here pretty soon, and it's just um, basically navigating through USMS and their website. A lot of really fun, exciting things going on, and, and that's kind of my passion right there. So, and in, the, and in the middle of all this, you're also a coach for Oregon City Tankers. You're a master swimmer yourself. I mean, where do you find the time to fit all of this in? I mean, I'm blessed with a unique opportunity. Um, my, my career allows me a little bit of free time. I coach early in the mornings, and then I, I go to work, and then I have my afternoons where I, I actually swim, and I train with the USA Swim Team that I'm very involved with as a meet director, as an assistant coach. Um, it just, I like to stay busy. It's, it, to me, it's a lot of fun. It's not really work, so um, you know, how, can I, how can I not just be busy and engage in all the things that are exciting to me? So. What do you do for a living? I'm a licensed funeral director in the state of Oregon. Okay. Well, that's, I would imagine swimming is a good way to kind of take your mind away from all of that. My spiritual experience, my, you know, my relaxation, so yeah. Well, before we go, Taylor, I want to wrap up the show with something we call the Final Five, I'll ask you some five questions that will give, give us a little bit more idea of your thoughts. Let's start off with um, the first question. If you could change the order of the strokes in the individual medley, how would you change it? I like it where it is, I really do. I like, because I'm, I'm okay at fly, backstroke, they kind of relax, and then I just, I reel them in on breaststroke. I'm a breaststroke, so uh, it's strategically set in there for me to, to catch up. <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to try? I think I would like to be like a traveling coach um, and go around and, and do swim clinics and, and coaching clinics of that nature. I think that'd be a whole lot of fun. Okay. What profession would you least like to try? I guess maybe as a police officer, I think that would be a very difficult job to have. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, number four, if you could add or remove any rule from the swimming rule book, whether it's Masters or USA Swimming, what would that rule be? I think the 15 meter mark. I think it was exciting and I, you know, swimming, the fastest part of swimming is underwater in the streamline and watching people like Misty Hyman and David Burke out back back when I was a young swimmer. Um, it was exciting to watch that. You know. Very interesting. And then finally, where is your favorite place to go on vacation? Anywhere with an island in blue water. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you there. I'm there with you. Well, I hope you get some time to take that vacation. It sounds like you're very busy, but um, I, I, as you said, you know, you love doing it, so it's, it doesn't really sound like work. 
No, it's totally a pleasure. It's, it's, it's a great experience. Well, Tim, congratulations on the award, and uh, good luck with everything in and out of the pool. Thank you, Jeff. All right, so that, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. Thanks for tuning in. You can go to our Masters News channel at SwimmingWorld.com to see the full list of people honored by U.S. Masters Swimming recently at the USAS convention. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.